In this video, we will see poor science, the proof and evidence, and disappointment in the American Astronomical Society's response to the poor science. I'm Ben Davidson of Space Weather News on behalf of the entire Observers Collective. A recent paper in the prestigious and widely read Astrophysical Journal Letters by Dr. Manasvi Lingam at Harvard and the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics is outright wrong. The American Astronomical Society knows it, and they will not allow a rebuttal to the work to be published. Here are the basics. The study was motivated by claims that mass extinctions are related to changes in Earth's magnetic field, namely magnetic reversals. This study by Lingham investigates the increased radiation dose to the surface without Earth's magnetic field strength, and also the atmospheric loss, like what we think happened to Mars. The study adequately shows that neither of these two processes alone, or combined, is likely to be severe enough to cause mass extinction. After this analysis, the conclusion is drawn that mass extinctions are not a part of the magnetic reversal process because of their analysis of radiation dose and atmospheric loss. A relatively broad statement about a geophysical and biospheric process in an astrophysical journal, no less. And while this sentence may attempt to seek refuge behind the word unambiguous, other portions, including the abstract, are far more definitive about the message. The American Astronomical Society indeed played the key role in preventing this discussion from appearing in the appropriate forum. They publish a few journals, but all rebuttals to their papers must go to the research notes section, by their rule, and I indeed initially tried to do this the right way. Actually, initially isn't the right word. The first four times we tried to do this the right way, doing exactly what was asked of the new submission each time, and each time finding a new reason for the topic to be avoided. Below this video, I do have links to copies of some of these submissions so you can see them for yourself. We will indeed be going over the scientific arguments in this video, however. First, my comment was too general. Then, I needed to demonstrate the harm. Then, we didn't sufficiently rebut the original analysis, which we never actually claimed to do. It is, in fact, how that analysis was applied. Back and forth, with Puddle jumping at their request, instead of progress towards publication. I love the American Astronomical Society journals. I believe that commentary in science journals is of the utmost importance, and with the only journal appropriate for such a rebuttal unwilling to participate, here we are on social media. So perhaps some fast thinkers out there already know what the issue is. You cannot selectively choose two ways in which the biosphere changes, and then seek to make a broader statement about the topic as a whole. On the topic of the timing, whether or not they occur together, one can look at various forms of evidence of the timing in rock, fossils, ice cores, etc. When it comes to figuring out which factors are playing a role and to what degree, one does what Lingham did, pick some factors and investigate. However, what has no merit whatsoever is a blend of the two, cherry-picking two factors among potentially dozens to hundreds in a magnetic reversal, and then making a statement about the broader temporal correlation saying that the reversals do not cause mass extinctions. We do not claim he did any bad math or improperly analyzed the long-term changes in radiation dose or atmospheric loss, but in omitting other long-term changes and literally every short-term one, this broader conclusion is unwarranted. Here we declare not only that this conclusion is plainly overreaching by any logical measure, we hope you can see that already with simple reasoning skills, but that we also have considerable evidence of precisely the opposite conclusion, that numerous challenges to the biosphere do occur and likely constitute a complex ensemble of difficulties that presents the scariest possible gauntlet for life on Earth. The first points we will make were actually made mostly by Lingham himself in 2017 in a paper with Abraham Loeb, the famous astrophysicist from Harvard, where they came to major conclusions about Earth's risk of a super flare in the next thousand years, something 10 to 100 times bigger than the Carrington event of 1859. But there are three elements that they investigated in 2017 that are missing from the Lingham 2019 paper, which we are rebutting here the ozone loss, resulting UV risk, and the resulting transient temperature change applied to the biosphere in the short term by short-term space weather events. The ozone loss from the Carrington event is shy of the extinction level, obviously, but that is under Earth's currently strong magnetic field and does not begin to consider what happens in a magnetic reversal. 
Carrington events are thought to recur every 200 years or so, which makes their coincidence with a weaker magnetosphere in reversal a serious possibility. Does it act like a supernova or gamma burst on the ozone with a weaker magnetic field? They saw fit to examine these concepts here, but Lingam ignored them in 2019 under the weaker magnetic state. This is the original paper we submitted, which gives examples of adverse effects to plant life from geomagnetic changes, and also the UV risks that would obviously be amplified due to ozone loss. There are also considerable lines of evidence that the microalgae would suffer under a weakened magnetic state at Earth. These are the foundations of the food chain, and are ignored factors in the recent study. Back to Lingam's own words. There were actual temperature changes imparted on the surface, short-lived, but potentially hazardous if taken just to a bit more extreme. We have to take even the normal 11-year cycle flaring seriously on this level with a weaker magnetosphere, and definitely a Carrington-level event, and its effects on microbes, leaves, flowers, insect, lizard, and bird eggs, and on the energy balance in the atmosphere and ocean. Merited discussion in 2017, ignored in the recent study. Back again to our rebuttal. Solar forcing of the terrestrial climate is in fact the subject of our textbook, and this is a sampling of the hundreds of citations that could be used to demonstrate the sun's direct effect on clouds, storms, lightning, and again, global temperatures, not to mention major oscillations like El Nino. This is an entire book all to itself, broken out entirely, before you consider the magnetic reversal, and to ignore all of it in the 2019 study is probably the most egregious omission. I do apologize for the bold glitch down there, this happened in the PDF process at journal level. I am showing the actual converted submission file here. I cannot really blame him for not being terribly knowledgeable about the seismic and volcanic risks of such a situation, unless of course one is writing a paper saying that these magnetic reversal situations do not cause mass extinctions, in which case this literature is helpful to know. And again, this is only a tiny selection of the available citation literature due to their word limits, or I would have added much more. Indeed, with cosmic rays being the number one increasing space energy factor in a magnetic reversal, their effect on magma viscosity at silica-rich sites absolutely cannot be ignored, or the resulting effects on the climate. One cannot ignore the direct biological effects of the photon energy, particle energy, and interplanetary magnetic fields of the Sun. Again, only a few of the available citations, which do continue on to the next page, showing the major cardiac effects even on healthy people in terms of blood pressure and heartbeat. The psychological effects are interesting as well, and are confirmed both by human retrospective statistical analysis and in situ studies of mice, rats, rabbits, etc. It's real for all animals. Cognition, motor skills, and focus go down. Emotional instability and anxiety go up. And frankly, there is no way to ignore any adverse influence on life in the relatively competitive and unforgiving natural world. Finally, there is evidence for the correlation between extinctions and magnetic reversals in time that is based on proper evidence. This brings us back to the initial logical fallacy that you cannot go for the factors, be highly selective, and then make broad general statements about the timing while not refuting any of the actual evidence used to claim the timing matches up. Here is a list of the rebuttals to Lingam 2019. The premise is flawed. You cannot ignore the bulk of potential biosphere changes and make claims about the temporal correlation. The ozone loss and short-term climate changes shown to be dangerous by Lingam and Loeb in 2017 were not only ignored in 2019, but must be scaled up under a magnetic reversal to scarier levels, that's actually numbers 2 and 3, and would apply to potentially 11-year cycle flaring and definitively to the 200-year level Carrington event. The UV risks to plants were recognized in 2017, ignored in 2019, and there's ample evidence to suggest considerable challenges to both plants and microbial life in a magnetic reversal. The climate changes include clouds, precipitation, lightning, temperatures, storms, and more. None of it is considered in Lingam 2019. Seismic and volcanic hazard may be reasonably hypothesized to increase during a magnetic reversal, but at very worst, one cannot outright deny the possibility without investigation, as did Lingam 2019. Cardiac and mental challenges posed by changing environmental electromagnetism also should not be ignored, and the known correlations should be amplified in a magnetic reversal. The timing data used to claim the relationship exists was not challenged in Lingam 2019, and yet the conclusions utterly refute them. Finally, there is a major forum and venue issue here as this is mostly a geophysical discussion with astrophysical and biophysical relevance. 
The paper could have been published in a more appropriate journal, especially with the geophysical implications of the broad conclusion. The editor, by the way, said at one point, if the big event plays out, we're all screwed anyway, so what's the point? His words, not mine. Dr. Lingam, it is true. The majority of this evidence and these factors should probably have been addressed given the title and topic and conclusions of your paper. But at the very least, the principle of blending a selective factor analysis with the broader temporal correlation was an improper treatment of the problem, resulting in an unfounded conclusion about the correlation between magnetic changes on Earth and mass extinction. NASA, NOAA, the European Space Agency, Nobody denies that Earth's magnetic field can weaken to 5-10% to of its current strength, and in my honest opinion, such a drastic scenario may not even be adequately represented by your 2019 analysis, even in just the radiation dose and atmospheric loss. But I am willing to play devil's advocate, give those analyses of the two factors the benefit of the doubt. Yet, unquestionably, there are major issues that remain. So, what do we want? Well, we do consider multiple options to be academically acceptable here. The first one we do not prefer, and that would be that the paper is retracted. A paper could be published restricting your 2019 conclusion to the unlikely nature that those two factors were the cause of the reported correlation with extinctions. That would also be acceptable as it would resolve the overreaching conclusion problem that is truly at issue here in the first place. The option we drastically prefer is that you use us as your 400,000 person research assistant group, your 400,000 grad students who will do all of the research legwork for the proper paper on this matter. In fact, we've already done it. Indeed, this third option would be to co-author the full appropriate paper with us. Now I must apologize for any negative backlash that will result from this commentary in this venue. I attempted to do this in the journals, in the academic realm, in the right way, but was not allowed to do so. While I have met frustration with the American Astronomical Society, we stand at a mere academic disagreement, and one that should be dealt with in an academically appropriate manner. We wish to express respect to you, your previous co-author and current co-worker Dr. Loeb, and to Harvard, the Center for Astrophysics, and to the American Astronomical Society. My email can be found below the video along with some of the papers I tried to submit. Respectfully requesting response, Ben Davidson, on behalf of the Suspicious Observers.